Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Chen. This is a segment on temporal fillers from a trainer's point of view. And there is information in this clip that is not shown or discussed anywhere else and I feel that I need to share it with uh, those who are learning to learn about temporal fillers. This segment will be narrated by Mr. John White. Temporal fillers. What should you know? There are three different planes for filler deposition. Some practitioners prefer one over the other. Personally I inject into all three different planes, because of the aesthetic outcome I am looking for. The plane of injection, depends on the patient condition presented at the time. It is a balance of risks versus results. They are the superficial fat plane, subdeep fascial plane, and supraperiosteal plane for filler deposit. To understand the danger, and the plane, it is important that you know the anatomy of the layer here very well. The obvious danger in this section, is the frontal branch of the superficial temporal artery, which sits in the superficial fascial plane. This is the layer immediately under the skin. And when looking at the patient's temple area, its course is variable but the injector must assume this is in the way of the needle. More on this later. The three different planes, have their advantages and disadvantages. Let's revise the anatomy on this briefly. The layers are the skin, fat deep fascia, temporalis and the bone. The superficial fascia where the frontal branch of the superficial temporal artery is just beneath the skin. The first plane. The most superficial plane to place the filler, is the superficial fat plane. This is below the superficial fascia, therefore below the artery. To inject in this plane, a cannula is used, and it passes easily through the fat. A needle is not used, as there are usually superficial veins. One can easily puncture causing massive bruising, and if the needle inadvertently goes superficial in its course, it can injure the artery in its path. A cannula may also hit the artery in the same manner but the risk is a lot lower. The downside to this, that results can be lumpy as the filler is very superficial. So in patients with very thin skin over this area, the aesthetic result is not as good, and especially those with visible superficial temporal veins. The veins will be a lot more prominent than previously, and may not settle for a long time. If it is lumpy, one may be able to gently massage the area to spread the filler. If this plane is used, then one also cannot use fillers with high G' or viscosity. With this cannula technique, this is the simplest of the three. And being superficial, less fillers are needed to show results. The second layer. Subdeep fascia. The deep fascia is fairly thick and in order to go subdeep fascia, only a needle is possible. The cannula won't be able to penetrate the deep fascia. This is my favorite layer, because it gives a smooth and gentle lifts, and not requiring as much filler as the deep supraperiosteal plane. But it will require more filler than the superficial fat plane. Aesthetically this gives the best results. The challenge is to be able to identify that one has penetrated the deep fascia, and this is by feel. There is a pop sensation where the needle hits a resistance, and then it suddenly gives way. This is demonstrated in the cadaver dissection in the anatomy for injectors program. The deep fascia is a sheet, and it is thick. It is easy to spread filler under this sheet as it is not tightly glued to the temporalis muscle. I usually deposit 0.1 milliliters, then change the direction if further volumization is required. If the temple area are to be filled, it is a big area, I inject the same way at a different point. So the pro is, 
that I won't be using a lot more filler than the superficial fat plane, and I get better aesthetic results, and less issue with vein prominence. But what about the risk of injection using a needle, as we have to assume that the course of the artery or vein is in its path. One have to inject under adequate lighting. I don't find a vein finder necessary, and after injecting all these years I've been able to avoid those prominent veins simply by visual examination. In the event of hitting a vein, a pressure over the puncture mark will suffice. So the patient may only see a slight bruise like a needle mark. One should be vigilant of this possibility, and needle must be withdrawn, and pressure applied immediately should it occur. When the patient is resting, the caliber of the artery is small, and in limited ultrasound studies on young female patients I studied, these are of the caliber of half a millimeter. This is not indicative of all patients as there are variations in course and diameter. If one injects with needles going through this layer, there is definitely a chance, although small that one could be unlucky enough to injure the artery which happens to be in the way. And chances increase with someone who injects a hundred in a year compared to one who injects once a year. The third plane. This is the deepest of all planes to deposit the filler. The filler is placed in the superior steel plane. It gives a subtle lift, and therefore it requires largest volume of the three planes. It is easy to identify this plane, because the needle touches the bone. A needle has to be used as it is required to go through the deep fascia, and the temporalis muscle. The risk of needle is the same as mentioned above, injecting in the subdeep fascial plane. The entry point for this is identified as 1 cm lateral to the temporal fusion line, and 1 cm posterior to the orbital bony rim. Technically speaking this filler is in the temporalis muscle, which is firmly attached to the bone. From this injection point only the filler is placed then massaged into place. And one would imagine the filler cannot lift the muscle off the bone, and can only move along the muscle itself. This could be a challenge if slightly larger than normal filler is required. Depending on the patient this may not be possible. Larger area for filler is required. And should one inject in a possible lesser than 1 cm. This is before the temporal bone curves away, large amount of filler is trapped in in a tight space confined, by the deep fascia resulting in patient complaining of pressure or headache. In an actual case recorded, the patient complained of pressure after the injection is withdrawn. Immediately after one could see the pulsating artery. This means that the artery has vasodilated because of the pain. Because of vasodilation, the artery now has a higher chance of being injured. Absence of pulsation, or negative aspiration should not give injector confidence. What happens if the point of entry is further away from 1 cm? The needle required may be longer as the bone slopes away. And theoretically there's more muscle mass, and more chances of injuring the muscle itself. Has studied the anatomy of this area in detail, and be trained to inject under supervision. An injector should evaluate the risks in each case, and vary the injection according to the situation. All the three planes have pros and cons. As mentioned, I inject all the three planes depending on the situation. Of the three different planes, can be found, in the Anatomy for Injectors module, from Aesthetics and Skin Institute. The link is below.